Welcome to the very first episode of the Cautions Out. This, this show is strictly about NASCAR and getting to the fundamentals of what makes the NASCAR family tick. We're not here to talk about just racing. We're here to talk about people and families and what makes NASCAR so awesome. You see our very special guest for our very first episode, Mr. Austin Dillon and Parker. Parker's a young man, goes to Mississippi State University, cool dude. But let's talk to Mr. Dillon here and see what's going on in his life with this coronavirus. Hey, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm sitting at my barn. Been doing that a lot lately. Uh, I got my iRacing rig in front of me. I've been doing a lot of iRacing, trying to learn, get better. Uh, boy, that's been frustrating. Can't get out of my own way because I get wrecked every week. But um, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like real racing. You know, you just got to get lucky sometimes. We were pretty fast, though, last week. Qualified seventh and then Logano tried to make it uh, a pass early with no uh, quick fixes. Uh, but we don't have those in real race cars either, so I'm glad they did away with quick fixes. I just got unlucky involved in the one that took me out. I tell you, man, uh, <clears throat> several people have asked me why I don't get into iRacing as a hobby. And, uh, man, I just don't want to tear everybody's cars up for them. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I do good to drive out regular. But uh, at 200 miles an hour, I just don't know about all that. But that, that eye racing to me is a lot more difficult than it looks. It is. It's really difficult. But, I mean, if you get a lot of laps, you get better and better. And it's just putting the time in. I mean, it makes your brain hurt a lot staring at the screen all day. But you can get faster. And, uh, obviously, William Byron and Timmy Hill, they know what's going on. They've done a good job with it. Next week is Talladega, though, this Sunday. And uh, they were talking about giving us quick fixes, not giving us quick fixes. And um, I said, well, we start blocking at about 200 mile an hour on lap one without any quick fixes in real life. So might as well not put them in the game. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. All right. Well, uh, look, we, we like to talk about racing, but we also like to talk about the people of NASCAR. I want to get to know you. I want these people watching this show to understand the real Austin Dillon and know who Austin Dillon is, where he came from and what he's up to. So, uh, Right now, I, I'm uh, – today, we went to our, a baby appointment. My wife's pregnant. She's uh, due June 21st with our first son. His name is Ace. Thank you. His name's uh, Ace R.C. Dillon. And, uh, obviously, the R.C. is after my grandpa. The Ace, uh, my grandfather always – there's an old picture of me and him, and it's called uh, – he's, he's just holding the Ace of Spades, and I'm in his arms as a baby, and he called me the Ace in the Hole. So – we named our kid Ace after that. Um, so your nickname just, uh, is Ace? Yeah. My logo's got the A and the D, and it's in the form of an Ace. So uh, we pretty that's much – That's what I'm talking it. about. We got the Ace in the house, Parker. We got the that's Ace. What I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Holy my went far, far behind, baby. He went it for you. Yes, sir. <laughs> we're, uh, so we're just chilling here in North Carolina. I've been working out a lot, been getting stronger. You know, trying to uh, get bigger than Matt Benedetto before we go back out of quarantine. He's got some pretty big arms on him, so I'm going to try and outdo him from the time we get back. Man, you know what, Austin? I think you need to challenge him to an arm wrestling match, man. I think you can take it. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, he got big real quick. I don't know how he did that so fast. But uh, I'm working on it hard to try and catch up to him. Maybe by the end of this uh, summer and end of this quarantine, I might be ready. There you go, man. Protein, protein, protein. That's the way to get there. That and Coca-Cola. That's right. That's why I get you a refreshing Coca-Cola. Ain't nothing better. I've, I've, Austin, I've heard a lot about your barn house. Yeah. That's and, where uh, I'm at right now. That, that's absolutely amazing that you, uh, that you created that thing. I mean, I, I love the idea. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? You know how that thing works? Yeah, so um, right now I'm kind of in the um, – it, it, actually, I can't take credit for it. My dad wanted to build a barn apartment style that was kind of originally going to be a shop for our dirt team. So we were going to kind of race out of it at one point in time. And um, it kind of got turned into a living space. And uh, my dad, my brother lived here for a little while. And my dad convinced me to buy it from him because Ty needed a hat place to live. He bought my house. So we kind of swapped. And, um, now, then that house is just literally right at the front of the road here. 
So uh, I got my best friend, Paul, and, and uh, my wife's best friend, Meryl. They live in that house, and we live up here in the barn. And it's cool, man. It's just um, I got a basketball goal in here. It's just kind of a man cave out here in the main garage part. But when I met Whitney, I knew I had to make a little nicer uh, bedroom. So I walled off one of the garage stalls and made that our, our master bedroom in there. And yeah. uh, she did a really good job making it nice and girly. So at least she has the the nice living area where it's painted white, real pretty. <laughs> and then I get to come in here and do what I want, play video games, whatever. And we got a big pool outside. But it's pretty much just a big party house. And now it's somewhere we live and we're getting older, having kids. So it's uh, starting to calm down a little bit. Yeah, well, hey, Austin, I can... I, I'm, uh, I'm looking in the background here, and it looks like a pretty sharp car back there. You want to tell us a little bit about that car back there? Yeah, that's uh, it's a gold Camaro. I wrapped it uh, a while back. I got it actually out of high school. I got it. My dad got it, uh, and it was number seven off the line oh, uh, nice. when Camaro wow. came out, came back out. The year they came back out, I don't know if it was 07, 08. Right the year they graduated, I think, when they came back out with Camaro, and he got number seven off the line. And um, I had it – it's black underneath the wrap, but I had it wrapped. I saw a Lamborghini in Miami wrapped chrome gold, and I said, oh, I'm going to do it to my Camaro. <laughs> so I got it wrapped gold, and that's the one that when we won Charlotte, uh, the 600, we came back here, and I did a burnout inside the barn with it, and uh, the marks are still on the concrete in here. Heck yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's a real cowboy right there. Do a burnout right in the barnhouse, man. And you, know, you, you brought up Whitney. Uh, let, me, let me ask you a question because we've been locked down four weeks at my house and the practical joking is getting a little out of control around here. So how, how are y'all doing with this lockdown? Is it, Are y'all getting into some serious practical joking or what's going on up there? Well, really, uh, not. I don't mess with uh, pregnant mama. She's not one to mess with, truthfully. I understand that. She fly yeah, hot in a minute, but uh, she's been good. I've been good. We haven't been doing a whole lot of messing around. I'm trying to think if anything's real funny's happened. Uh, watched a lot of TV shows. Um, Ozarks finished that season off, and uh, hang out with my dog a lot, Gucci. She's actually over here sleeping on the couch right now, so she's pretty chill. She's a French bulldog. Well, heck yeah, heck yeah. Yep. Well, cool deal. Well, look, man, I got to ask the question. Everybody wants to know the answer to this question. People have even asked me this question. What do you think was going on and, and all that? And I got to ask you, and I, I don't want to bring up any bad emotions or anything like that, but people have been wanting to know for a long time, what, what was your emotions and feelings going through your head when you crossed the finish line at the Daytona 500 in the number three car. Everybody has always wanted to know what what were your feelings and emotions inside that race car as you crossed that finish line? Well, um, I grew up going to the racetrack there in Daytona. You know, I'm from North Carolina, but I lived – we went down to Daytona every year in February. It was like a second home. We were down there for two weeks um, from the time I was born. You know, I've been watching races down there, and um, I was able to watch Dale Earnhardt pull into victory eight victory lane in 98 i was only eight years old but i was there i got to do the hat dance and see everybody excited and happy and then throughout the years i grew up and understood how special that day was um i got to witness kevin harvick win there and just see different people come through rcr stables and how big february was when we went to daytona and um you know coming through the truck series and and then winning a race in the xfinity series it was a it was a big day um when I got that first win. So uh, when you get to the Daytona 500 and you pull through the tunnel, there's just something that uh, runs through your body that just tells you something's different. You know, it's special. There's an adrenaline uh, from the time you get in the race car on Sunday, from the time you wake up on Sunday, something just feels different. Um, the people, the fans, you know, everybody's going to tune in from around the world and watch you race. And, uh, end of that night, uh, crumbing the start finish line, looking in my mirror and knowing no one's going to get there. It's just, uh, it's a feeling like any other, you know how they say the masters, it's like, uh, when they play the golf tournament, it's a tournament like any other, unlike any other or something. That's like our 500, man. It's just, it's everything you dream of your whole life racing and, um, going to victory lane there. It's just, it's bad to the bone. Yeah, man, 
you get to walk around the rest of your life a Daytona 500 champion. I mean, there's how, how many of those do we have individually? Maybe I hadn't counted them, but maybe 40 people have yeah. in the history of the world have won the Daytona 500. Man, we were we were so proud of you. I'm telling you, dude. I I wasn't an Austin Dillon fan when you crossed the finish line at Daytona. I'm just gonna tell you. But I'm I'm a NASCAR fan, and I love my NASCAR. Uh, it, it's just what it is. I love everybody out there because you go out there and and you and you you risk your life. You do things you enjoy, but everybody's risking their life. And then we invite you into our living room, and y'all consume our living room for three to four hours on any given Sunday. You know, so it, it's a big deal. It's a big deal to me. You know, and I I, I don't know what I'm trying to say there. It's just. No, that means a lot, man. You, you I, get, I totally you understand. Get, I've seen your emotions. I see see what you mean, and that's what I grew up yeah. watching racing myself. That's what my family has done. It's entire. It's what it's what we eat off of. You know what I mean? It's what we feed yeah. uh, many people at our race shop with is is the fuel of NASCAR. And um, I mean, I miss used to wake up on Sundays watch Dale Earnhardt, and if Dale Earnhardt won, which was about every other Sunday back then, we were getting pizza. So I just <laughs> I compared winning to pizza always trying to get yeah. to get to that pizza at the end but um yeah you know it's it's special i love uh nascar i hate that we're not at the track right now but i know they're doing all they can to get us back out there and i racing's filled the void for now but uh man it'd be awesome if we get back and go to to darlington uh, or somewhere they're saying we're gonna try and get to somewhere we can drive to so sooner the better for me i'm ready to get back to the track i know i miss it i miss all the fans but uh, hopefully yep. put on some good shows to the end of the year. Well, well, look, what's your favorite thing to do away from the track? When you're, when you're, when you're out of the race car and you're just chilling, what's your favorite thing to do? Well, I love hunting and fishing. I love the outdoors. Um, our sponsor, Bass Pro Shops, you got Tracker Off-Road, all the people that help us do this. It's pretty cool and convenient that um, they're, they're partners with us because I, I love getting outdoors. I went turkey hunting with my grandpa last week. Uh, we didn't get one the next day he got one and the day after that uh, me and my buddy got one so we've done a pretty good job so far hunting hunting's my my thing though i love to hunt and uh, fish with my dad a couple times since the quarantine so it's been good to kind of chill and get to actually hang out with my family a little bit um outside of the racetrack it is kind of strange off getting off time this time of year <laughs> yeah it is you don't you don't get it well, look, Austin, man, you told us that you like fishing. You told us that you like hunting, man. Is there any specific, just incredible fishing or hunting story that you got that you want to tell us, man? I, I'm, I'm dying to hear. Yeah, you know, um, heck, I've had some good, good hunting stories. I shot some good deer, a lot of elk. I got elk in here. Uh, I, I shot an elk with a bow. That was probably one of my coolest things I've ever gotten. Um, Make some talent there. Yeah, that was pretty intense. That was out in Colorado. Um, but any time you get out in the woods with just your friends, I like showing people that have never been hunting and fishing. And, and uh, you know, my buddy got a turkey the other day, and I was calling. We used a fan. That was exciting, you know what I mean, just getting to experience that with him. So, you know, we've, we've had some good times for sure out in the, the good outdoors. Hey, Parker, what's this racing league you race in? Let's see if Austin's ever heard of that. Well, see, I, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't get in a seat and go 200 miles an hour. So I sit in my living room and I go about 189 miles an hour on a club. I'm an admin for Gas and Go Racing League for Heat Four, so uh, that's how I get my racing. And when I was younger, all I wanted to do was race, but you know, things didn't fall in line like like a lot of people would expect and hope. But uh, I race for Gas and Go, and it's a great league over there in Heat Four. Um, it's just a, just a really great league. We got a lot of great drivers. Probably we have the best preset drivers. Uh, Tyler Russ is one of our best uh, preset drivers. We have Corey Thomas. He's an admiral with me. Uh, just a really good league, and it's really grown in popularity since there's no race. Yeah. So um, on Sundays, we just get together and we try to follow the NASCAR schedule as best as possible. And we get out there and we hook up online and we get after it. So is this NASCAR Heat? Yes, sir. This is NASCAR Heat 4. This is uh, cool. not our race. Just, uh, just a good group of guys. You know He's Joey Stone? Uh, no, I don't believe I do. He's one of our um, heat drivers for the RCRs, NASCAR. Uh, we got Joey Stone, and I just met the new guy. He's from Michigan. you play Xbox or PlayStation? 
I play Xbox. I, I'm personally probably not good enough to race with some of the people that you're talking about. I just, you know, do it for fun. But uh, I haven't heard a lot of those guys. But I know that uh, he forward takes it very seriously about racing and stuff. So, I mean, boy, similar to what I race. Well, cool, man. Good luck. Go, go win one. <laughs> I've won a couple this season. I uh, had some internet troubles, but uh, getting my internet back up, getting ready to go racing. So, oh. my – so, so often, uh, does you know, let's change the subject here off of racing a little bit. Does, does Whitney hunt and fish with you? Well, I don't know, man. Uh, her parents, she's from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Her dad loves to hunt, and uh, that was a big selling point in getting married because me and him go hunting together and hang out. And uh, he, he goes hunting, deer hunting with me. Um, uh, but she was taught that the boys are the boys and the girls are the girls, <laughs> so she. She says I go shopping. She likes to shop better than she likes hunting. I've tried, I've tried to convince her to uh, go hunting. Uh, she owes me one hunt because I had to go do a photo shoot with her one time. And I said, look, I'm only doing this photo shoot if you go hunt with me. So she still owes me a hunt, and uh, we'll see if that ever comes true. Yeah. Has she tried to convince you to like shopping, vice versa? No, she's cool about that. She don't, she don't, she don't push me. I don't want to. I don't want to tell her that though, because then she'll give me grief for trying to get her to go hunting. Yeah, that's right. Picking battles, you know. Yeah. So, uh, Austin, you know, you're a race car driver. Your brother's a race car driver. Your grandfather was a race car driver. You you grew up in in Dale Earnhardt's garage. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever wanted to do anything other than be a race car driver? Or is that just like something you have? determined to be since you can remember oh I, I was really fortunate my parents pushed me to play other sports and I played baseball um when I was 12 I played baseball a lot and played in the little little league world series for the southeast region went to Williamsport yeah. that was pretty cool so about 12 years old I, I wanted to be a baseball player and um but as time grew on uh I realized that I was the same size as everybody in a race car so that kind of helped Ain't that the truth? Everybody's got a left foot and a right foot in a race car, and <laughs> tell you what, I I wanted to drive them when I was younger, and then I finally went to a race, and I no, I'm I'm not I'm not crazy like that. I mean, it, I don't I don't know what I don't know what you guys eat. I I don't know if you sleep on a bed of nails or what, but to get out there and go, you know, drive almost 200 miles an hour, three inches apart, is it's insane to me. But I love watching it now. I love it. I love it, but I just don't see how you do it. It is crazy. You stop and think about it. I mean, we we do some pretty crazy stuff. You have some bad wrecks over time, and you just get back in it and do what you got to do. So, um, you know, it's I've been fortunate. I've had some uh, good runs and win some races and got a lot more I want to accomplish. I want to be the first to win all three championships. I've got the Xfinity in the truck and Cup's last one and, and uh, to bring back RCR would be pretty cool to be able to do that. So we're working hard on it. I would love to see RCR back in the championship. Man, that would – that's awesome. I'll cry again. I'll, I'll cry again if that happens. I mean, uh, that that would be unbelievable. But look, well, look uh, Austin, man, we've, uh, we've talked about you going 200 miles an hour, man. But it, it's, it's been a while since it's been 200 miles an hour. And I've I got to ask, when you go to the grocery stores, they're just – doing it. Unscratchable itch, just a fort, get there as quickly as you can. <laughs> I've been pretty good lately, you know. I, when you hit the wall with a helmet and six point harness and all that stuff, you know how bad it hurts. And then you go get in a regular car. I'm kind of a wuss because I don't have all that safety stuff. So I kind of chill. I mean, I I haven't even gotten a speed ticket, knock on wood. So I've been pretty good. Well, you've got one last night there. <laughs> hey let me ask you something and I, I probably already know the answer to this question have you caught a lot of flack for bringing the three car back to cup well you know you, you got it's sports in general that uh, you're going to have people that like you or you don't like you and uh, that's what's great about sports you got the underdogs you got the guys that are the top dogs you got rivalries um, I've had some great fans from the number three car come with me and support me and Dale Jr. really helped out when he came out and gave me his support um, yeah. with running the number three. And uh, But, yeah, I mean, you get guys over time, but I just block, block them on yeah. Twitter. I don't see any of that stuff. So uh, I just I just let the good – I filter the good in 
and then try and uh, take care of the people that take care of me uh, while I'm doing this interview. I love what you said the other week about me. That was cool. And well, thanks for uh, having me on y'all's show. Well, let, let, me, let me tell you, I got, I got a take on this whole thing. And I've told people, and I, I, I am involved with a lot, of, a lot of NASCAR fans. Okay. And, and when I say that, I probably know more NASCAR fans than the average American knows people. Uh, I know thousands of them. And people ask me, why is he bringing that three car back to cup? Why? It's not time. It's not this. I'm going to tell you the same answer I gave them back then is the same answer I give today. Austin Dillon was, Dale Earnhardt was a part of Austin Dillon's life. Austin Dillon's grandfather is Richard Childress. And this is exactly what I tell them. I said, Richard Childress and Dale Earnhardt are synonymous with each other. Austin Dillon, Dale Earnhardt was a part of his life. And I said, how cool is it that the three car is being brought back on the track with someone that it means so much to when in 40 or 50 years, the number may come back, we'll all be gone. It may be Jake Leg Racing shop that owns the number three by the end. And it's some person that has no connection to Dale Earnhardt that has just, you know, and that's, that's what I tell them. I said, we, we're lucky. We got somebody to bring that three car back that it meant something to. And, and I know it, I know what it means to you. And it, every time you cross the finish line in that car, I know what it means. I know what it's going to mean if you win a championship in that car. And that's going to be a huge celebration. And I hope you do win one. I hope yes, you win sir. three of them. We'll but, definitely uh, get after it. That'd be, that'd be awesome, man. I, I wouldn't know what to do. I, winning Daytona was amazing, but winning a championship, that would send it over the moon. I'd accomplish everything that I'd want to accomplish right there. Tell you what, that would be that would be something. That would be something. I, I want to be. If that happens, you got to have me in Homestead, baby. All you right. got to have me in Homestead. You got to get me the passes because when you when you roll into Championship Square, I will be there. That rhymes right there. See, see, see. <laughs> I got it. Everybody I've ever picked has won championships, and uh, it's just what it is. I, I do a lot of studying, and I, I pay attention to everything that goes on. But look, uh, we're about to wrap it up, man. Is there anything you'd like to say to the young fans, old fans alike? Any, any, just any little personal message from Austin Dillon, the driver of the number three car? I think the biggest thing is thank you guys for, for being NASCAR fans. Thank you for coming to the track, supporting us away from the track, at the track, anywhere we go. Our, our partners, you guys are the best in the world. And uh, after a little bit of time away from the sport with this quarantine, it just makes you even more thankful for all the, the fans out there. So I just thank you guys and uh, hope you guys enjoy the show and keep on keeping on, man. You guys are doing good. Well, we appreciate you, buddy. We appreciate you coming on and being our first guest. Yes, sir. No problem. Y'all have a good one. Thank you. You too. Thank you, Austin. Awesome.